Hello, welcome back. So in this lesson, we're going to see how to convert an existing project into a real-time application using the free artist real-time kernel. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a normal application from scratch and then test that it's working and then convert it to the real-time application. So let's do that. I've opened my car you vision over here and what I'm going to do is come to project, new project. And what I've done is I have a folder here known as the free artist course and I'm going to keep all the project of this course in it. So I'm going to create one. I'm going to create the first one. I'm going to call this folder number zero and I'll call this getting started. So if you've seen any of my latest um, Aritos courses, what I do is we build the um, we build all the project in a chronological order. So we end up with project zero, one, two, three, up to 50 or something. And at the end of the course, you sort of create for yourself a cookbook, a reference manual that you can refer to. We're going to arrange all the projects this way. So um, this is called getting started. And I'm going to call the actual project, the file name, I'm going to call it um, Blinky Arches. How about that? Blinky Arches, just like this. And I'll click, I'll hit enter, and then it brings me to this page. This page asks me to select my particular microcontroller. Currently, I'm using the STM32F4. I'm using the discovery board, and the version of STM32F4 on my disco board is the F411VET. It's over here. I click here. I click OK. And then it brings me to the manage runtime environment. And all I want to do at this moment is to click on CMSYS, select the core CMSYS, and then click on device, select the startup. And then because we're going to be blinking some LEDs, we might as well use the STM32 cube framework. So I'm just going to click over here, STM32 cube framework, and then click on classic. And then he asks about all of this, I click resolve and then I click OK. And the project is created and what we want is, I'll just rename my target to the name of my microcontroller. That is the STM32F4, STM32F4. And the source group, I'll just call this, I'll just call this, I'll rename it by clicking in here like this. And I'll call this app, just like this. And I'm going to create one file in here. Right click, add new item. And this is going to be the main file. I'll call this main, just like this. And it's set. So once this is open, I want to add my STM32 hardware abstraction layer. So I right click, insert include files, and then I select STM32F4HAL.H, like this. And now we are set. So we can just come here and then, of course, int main. And just come here, and then we open a while while loop. So what we're going to do is we're just going to write a bit of drivers to initialize the GPIO pins for the uh, the four LEDs on the disk board, and then we're going to blink them and make sure they work. So I'm going to create a function down here. I'll call this function void GPIO underscore init and this is a void void function like this so we start by just declaring a GPIO init structure um, and then we use the structure to initialize our pins but before we do that how about we just initialize clock access to the um, to the GPIOs we'll be using I'll just bring this here like this and I'm sure you you already know how to initialize LEDs on your STM board. If you if you use STM board, you know how to do that. So this the this is the port for the um, the LEDs. They are connected to port D. So then we start by first setting all pins to low like this. Our GPIO right pin port D, pin 12, pin 13, 14, 15. And then we're setting all of them to reset. Reset means low. And the LEDs are connected to these pins 12, 13, 14, 15. And once that is done, we can configure all of them at once. I'll just bring all of this here like this. And this one here selects the pins 
right these are the pins and then the mode we set all of them to output push pull and then the pull we say no pull and then the speed is frequency low and then this initializes the GPIO it's as simple as this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the prototype of this function up here like this and then I put a semicolon here and once that is done now I can call the function in here just clean this and then I just clean this all we're going to do is we're going to create symbolic names for the LEDs because it's a, a bit cryptic to refer to them as GPIO pin 12, 13, 14, 15 so I'm going to put a define statement here and I'm going to say define green I use cups and green is GPIO pin 12 so I'm just going to say GPIO underscore pin underscore 12 I'm going to define I'm going to define orange here underscore 13 and I'm going to do the same for red and blue. I change this to red. And red is pin 14. And I've changed this to blue. Blue is pin 15. Like this. Right. So we have this. So next time we want to toggle each any of these pins, we can just use them by these names, green, orange, red, and blue. So this is it. Um, now let's see whether we can blink all four LEDs at once. What I'm going to do is I'm going to call the GPIO, the hard GPIO right pin, right pin toggle or toggle pin API. So we just come over here. Call GPIO. Let's call toggle pin and this one here takes the um the port of the pin and then the pin number so it's gpio port d just come here gpio d and now i can just say green blue i can use the all operator to concatenate all of them blue red and orange like this put a semicolon here and we can create a bit of pseudo delay. We're not going to use the um, the hard delay here. Um, so let's just use this for loop. We just I'll put an int an integer type here, int i, and here I'll come here to say for i equals zero, i less than five hundred thousand one two three i plus plus. This just to create a pseudo delay. We're going to be using real time delays. Don't worry. So let's see. If this application this is our application let's assume this is it I'll just rebuild showing this warning because we don't have a new line here I'll just put this here and I'll come over here my default X tool is 16 megahertz under the debugger I select my ST link debugger if you are using the Texas instrument board yours is the Stellaris ICDI and I'll, I'll come to settings and under flash download I'll click over here reset and run and I click OK then I click OK then I connect to my board and download onto my board so I simply click here to download onto my board and as you can see all four LEDs are blinking so let's assume this is our application we wish to turn into a real-time application using the free avatars real-time kernel right so using Carl Uvision, it is very, very easy. It's very straightforward. Let's see how to do that.